So I bumped into this commercial the other day from 1979. Dumb terminals were really popular back then. Are you all familiar with dumb terminals? They're just a keyboard and a monitor connected to a central intelligence, like a mainframe or a server. And 1979 is also when Sony introduced Walkman, the portable cassette music player. I really love these old commercials. Now, 35 years later, today, we are literally surrounded by smart gadgets. Smart watches, smart TVs, smartphones, and apparently music playing smart toilets. And this, these gadgets are indeed really smart. Let's pick just the Nexus 5. It's a quad-core 2.3 gigahertz. I mean, I don't know what was your first computer when you were in college, but back then when I overclocked my Pentium 2 day shoots to something like 450 megahertz, I thought I was driving a Ferrari. And it was a tower this tall. But these gadgets, they share something in common with those dumb terminals. I'm so used to be always online, always connected, that I don't even download my music or my movies anymore. I use Google Play Musical Access, or Netflix, or Pandora, Spotify. So for these gadgets to perform smart operations, they have to be connected to an intelligence. And this intelligence is the cloud. In fact, those times that I find myself offline, it feels like something is missing. And maybe I'm playing a game like Flappy Bird. It's a game that got me really frustrated real fast. My name is Francesco, and thanks for joining my session. Today, I'm introducing a few Google services that will let you build applications that can perform really smart tasks and communicate across all these gadgets with a minimal effort spent on developing on the cloud. And communication is the key, communication across devices. For my watch to buzz me that it's time to jump on stage, it needs to communicate with my phone, which needs to communicate with the cloud. And communication among us. We live in a social application era. Twitter, WhatsApp, Google+, Facebook, Yelp. And we communicate through these applications that interoperate via the cloud. And in Google, we have a very popular service that lets your application interoperate across these devices. And it's one of my favorite products, Google Cloud Messaging. Now, Google Cloud Messaging is still experiencing a fantastic growth. Just from last year, we are processing now three times the number of requests. And this is like 700,000 queries per second which is over 60 billion requests every single day. And actually now, because we're in time of a World Cup, I've seen spikes over a few million queries per second. The other day, I was checking the graphs of the GCM requests. And it was really funny to see how you can match one-to-one -one the spikes with the goals scored by the various teams. So for example, this is the unfortunately only good match for Italy, it's Italy versus England. And you can see at 3 p.m. when it starts, there's a little buzz, little chatting. And then there's a huge spike, which is when Italy scores and England scores right after. And then finally, the winning goal for Italy. And at the end, there's a lot of texting when the match is over. Today, we have over 100,000 applications that already register with GCM. But this growth is not destined to go any slower, because we just announced a new member to the Google Cloud Messaging family. So today, you can send messages to your application on every single Android device. But now you can do more. Let me introduce GCM for Chrome. You have the very same APIs, multicasting, messages with payload, Send to Sync, all the APIs that you enjoy on Android, and you have the same performance, and we also kept the very same price. So to see how this works in details, let's imagine that we built a World Cup application. The basic idea behind GCM 
is that our WorldCap server can send a message to GCM, to our WorldCap application via GCM, and we can reach every single Android device out there. And now we can also reach our WorldCap application on any single Chrome browser or Chrome OS machine. And this is really important, because now we can reach the user on the screen where he's looking at. So for example, when I was preparing this deck, I was sitting on my couch on my laptop. If we had the WorldCap application on Chrome, I could have been notified at Italy score right there in the monitor I was looking at. To have the Chrome application work with GCM, we need to do the same steps that we do for Android. So we need first to register with the service. So we ask for a registration ID, and we get it from GCM. And the registration ID is the address of the Chrome application on a given browser. Just like for Android, is the address of an Android application on a given Android device. So now the Chrome application sends the registration ID to the WorkApp server, which can now send the message back to the application by addressing it to the registration ID. And these registrations are the same for Android and for Chrome. The WorldCap server doesn't even need to know which one is which. And because we are living in this world of multi-screens, it becomes more and more important and useful for us to be able to target a user rather than every single device. So it would be very useful if you could tell, hey, GCM, we send this message to this user, and now go figure it out. And today you can't do that, because we are launching for everybody the new API, user notifications. And the way this API works is really simple. As we have seen, every single device, our application on every single device, sends the registration ID up to the WorkApp server, which now has the mapping between the user account, the user that we signed in in our WorkApp application, and the registration IDs. And all we need to do is to give them mapping to GCM and say, hey, create this mapping for a user at my WorkApp app, and these are all his devices. So GCM creates a notification key, which is the identity of the user for the WorkApp application. And now, just like before, we can send the message and target it to the notification key to the user itself, and GCM delivers it to all of his devices and endpoints as they become available. So now, you can send a message and target me to say, Italy scored a goal. And we pop the notification on, our, on all my devices, on all of my screens. But because now we've seen this notification everywhere, it becomes more important that we synchronize the dismissal of this notification. If I see that Italy score on my watch, for as much as I like that notification, I don't want to see it again on my tablet. So when we act on the notification, we need a way to dismiss it everywhere else. And today we can do that because we are launching for everyone upstream messaging. Now, let's deep dive on an example to see how this works. Let's assume that we have a tablet and a phone and our World Cup application on both. So first we receive a message which Italy scored, and we put the notification on the system tray of our devices. And this is the code. On the broadcast receiver, we get the message. We look inside the message, we see the text, Italy 1, England 0, and we get an identifier, which is unique. So we build a notification with the notification manager, and we pop it on the notification tray. Now I'm closer to my phone, and I look at the notification right there. So what I do, I act on it. And what we need to do is send an upstream message to dismiss that notification. Here we are building a message, we grab the notification ID, we set the action to be dismissal, and we address it to the user, to the notification key, which is the identity of the user for our WorldCap application. Now, GCM does the rest. It gets the message and delivers it to the tablet. And now, just like before, the tablet receives the message from the broadcast receiver, sees the notification ID, and just calls notificationManager.cancel. It is really simple and yet very powerful. But upstream messaging, just as the name suggests, let us do more. We can send messages back up to our server by using the GCM infrastructure. 
For example, we could say, hey, we want to follow the next match, USA versus Portugal. And upstream messaging is really useful because it persists the message for us. Once we give it to GCM, even if there is no network, even if the phone reboots, the GCM stores it locally. So as soon as it has a chance to send it, it will do that. But for this to work, the WorkUp server needs to be connected to GCM. And today, we are going to launch for everybody a new service, which is a cloud connection service. With this service, we allow you to open up to 100 parallel persistent connections with the XMPP protocol to GCM. And you can stream messages through this 100 connection as fast as you can. So the WorkApp server opens this XMPP connection to GCM, and it authenticates with the classic project ID and API key. Now, if our Chrome applications want to send the message back to the WorkApp server saying, um, you know, we want to follow the, the match between Portugal and US, then all we need to do is to pack a message and address it to the project ID, which is the user that the WorkApp server used to authenticate the connection. And that's all you need to do, because GCM will look through the pool of healthy connections from our WorkUp server, and we'll pick one randomly and send the message to that server. Now, sometimes we might need to drain a connection, and we want to do that in a graceful way. So if you receive such a, me such a message, connection draining, then all you need to do is to stop sending new messages let the in-flight messages complete, then close the connection and open a new one. So now you can stream all these messages over these 100 connections, and GCM eventually is going to deliver them. And I'm saying eventually because, as you all know, devices go online and offline at all times. In fact, it will be really useful to know sometimes, for some use cases, when actually GCM sent a message to a specific device. So let me introduce a brand new API that we launched for everybody today, which is GCM Delivery Receipt. What this API does for you is that when the WorkUp server sends a message to GCM, let's assume that our browser is disconnected for now. As soon as the WorkUp application in Chrome connects to GCM, then we deliver the message, and then we send the receipt back to the WorkUp server. And the way you activate this API is really simple. When you send a message, you just specify that you want to have a receipt. And if you do so, the receipt message you get back looks like this one. We tell you which device we send the message to, specified by the registration ID, and the timestamp when we send the message. And because we really care about this multi-screen world, we want to make this delivery receipt work with a user notification API as well. So in the example before, if you send a message to me, to the user, now GCM will send the receipt back for every message and for every device we deliver this message to. So if Chrome connects first, we send the receipt with the registration ID of the Chrome application. As soon as Android connects, we do the same for my phone and then for the TV as well. It is important to note that delivery receipt, it works at the GCM protocol level. So in an example could be, I want to send my private message to my friend in London that Italy scored, and I want to be notified when the message is sent to his device. I want to make sure he's actually watching the game. For that, this is the best API. But then we also want to know if my friend read the message. And that's a delivery receipt at the application level, and for that, the best API is, again, upstream messaging. In fact, up upstream messaging is a great API for all sorts of ephemeral messages, like the user presence in a conversation list for a, an instant messaging application. And not only because we do persistency for the messages, not only because we take away the network troubles for you, but also we give GCM a chance to batch messages together and save battery life. If many applications send messages upstream using GCM, then GCM can collect them together. In mind that every time we wake up the radio, we consume battery life. In fact, there are other sorts of 
um, network calls, all the background network calls that are great to be able to batch together. For example, if your application, if our workup application wants to upload logs and statistics, we don't need to do that in real time. We can say something like, schedule me to run in the next hour and upload my logs. So these kind of calls are perfect to be collected and batched together so that we can wake up the radio only one time instead of multiple times. So today, let me introduce a new service that let us do exactly this. It's Google Cloud Messaging Network Manager. And the APIs for this new service are really simple. There are two main APIs. The first, you can schedule a task and you specify a time window. For example, the example before, uh, run my upload in the next hour whenever you want to. And then you can schedule periodic tasks. You can say, hey, run my stats upload every three hours but run me only in the first 20 minutes of each of those three hours period. And this is a code example for exactly this use case. And so now we have those 20 minutes to be able to batch things together. For example, we are receiving different tasks from different applications. But Network Manager does something even smarter. It listens to other signals. So in this case, even if we have five more minutes to wait, GCM sends a message that Idali scored and wakes up the radio. So the network manager might decide this is the right time to run all those tasks. And instead of waking up the radio five times, now we did it only once by piggybacking on the message from the cloud. And in fact, to maximize the chances for network manager to do the best they can to save battery life, in the previous example, the best would have been to say, schedule me to run every three hours whenever you want during that three hours period. So Network Manager is great because it persists our tasks. If our application gets killed, we wake up the application when we need to run your task. And same goes if the device reboots. It also takes care of network issues for us. It does retries in case of flakiness. If the job fails, it will retry it for us. If the server is busy, it will do exponential backoff for us. And plus, it will try to do the smart things to save as much battery life as you can. So let's check what we have seen so far. We first introduced GCM for Chrome. Now we can target our application on any Android device and on any Chrome browser and Chrome OS machine. And you can read more at developer.chrome.com slash apps-gcm. And there is also an I.O. Bytes recording on YouTube from Philip one of the engineers behind GCM for Chrome. Then we introduced four new APIs. The user notification that lets you target a user so that GCM sends the message to all of its devices. The upstream messaging that lets us synchronize notification dismissal. The cloud connection server that lets us stream messages up, up to 100 parallel connections. And deliver a receipt that inform our server when we actually send a message to a given device. And finally, we introduced the network manager. We picked a little bit in the future, because even if this service is not rolled out yet, it's part of the Play Services API. So as soon as we're going to roll it out, it'll be present on any device that is GCM capable. So communications. Communication across users and a communication across devices. We have seen how we can target a user and reach it on all of the screens for our workup application by just giving the mapping between a user account and all the registration IDs to GCM. And GCM creates the notification key, which is the identity of the user for our workup application. And identity is a great concept and let us do really cool stuff. For example, if we address a message to an identity, to a user, to me right now. It's great if you can send this message to my watch, my phone, and maybe my Chrome tablet here. But we should leave my tablet at home alone because we, there is no need to waste this battery over there because there's no chance for me to read the message right there right now. And identity let us do even cooler stuff. We have seen on the keynote in other sessions that by having the watch with me, I can keep my phone unlocked. And by having my phone unlocked in my pocket, 
he can tell the surrounding devices with my account that it's me. So if I walk towards my Chrome machine, he can keep my Chrome machine unlocked as long as we have the same account. And Google provides us with a very simple way to log in our users in our workup application with a Google account. And this is not just great because we don't have to reinvent or implement the whole account system, but also because the majority of users that have Android devices that are capable of GCM already have a Google account in it. So when our user click on our workup application, then we can automatically log the user in. No speed bumps for signups, no passwords. And then we can bring the login information back to our servers if we want to, we're just creating an identity token. We call the Google Auth Util get token, we pass the account name, and the account name is exactly the same account we just used to sign the Google user in. And identity is a key concept behind synchronization as well. Let's imagine that we want to add this functionality to our workup application. We want to let our users specify which is their favorite team, which is their favorite player, and also set some reminders. For example, the, match, the next match I'm interested in is about to start, so remind me that I need to buy some beer. To build this, let me introduce the all new Google Cloud Save APIs. Google Cloud Save let us store data in the cloud and synchronize it across all the user's endpoints as they go online and offline. And the data you store is owned by you, just like if you store it in your own server. The synchronization is powered by GCM, and it has full offline support, so we don't need to take care of the radio. And the APIs are really, really simple. You can save, delete, and query the data of your users, and if you need to, you can also force a sync. And the way you use this is just by telling the Google API client that you want to add a new API, which is the Cloud Save Manager API. And here you pass the account that we just used to sign our user in, the Google account. The main concept, storage concept, behind Google Cloud Save is an entity. And an entity is comprised of a kind and of a name. And you can think of a kind as the table in a database, and the name as the value of a primary key. And now it gets really powerful because you can dynamically add column to this table in the form of key value pairs. So back to our example, if we want to let a user specify what's their favorite team and their favorite player, we create an entity whose kind is preference. The name is team, and now we add the properties. Country Italy and the goalkeeper is Buffon. There is an in-depth session tomorrow about the simplicity and the power of the Cloud Save APIs, which I suggest you to attend from Jatin and Manfred. But for now, let's see what we had. Now, we built an application that can log in a user with a Google identity, that can store some data in the cloud, that can synchronize this data across our devices, for example, a phone and a tablet, and it can remind us that it's time to buy some beer. And we can do all this without spending or writing a single line of code up in the cloud. As you can see, we have, again, multiple notifications, and we want to dismiss them. And because we are using the Google identity, even dismissal notification gets simpler. Now, we don't need a server to dismiss these notifications because we can use the user notification API in combination with the Google identity. And here is how it works. Well, we first install our application on a phone. And our workup application tells GCM, hey, add this user, this Google account, this Google identity, to the notification key, and this is my registration ID. But GCM doesn't have a notification key yet, so it creates one for this Google account and adds the registration ID for our workup application on that phone. Now, as the user installs the application on more devices, for example, the tablet, then the tablet does the same thing. Say, hey, add this Google account to the notification key, and this is my registration ID. Now, GCM has the notification key. It just simply adds the device to that group. So back to our application, now we can simply dismiss the beer reminder 
just as we've seen in the previous slides. So, with the Google Identity, Cloud Save, and the User Notifications API, we have built a really powerful application that let us specify user preferences, reminders, synchronize the data across devices, and synchronize this missile, and we still haven't written a single line of code in the cloud. And all this because Cloud Save generates a server for us. It generates it on the Google Cloud. It generates an App Engine server for us. So now we can stop here, or we can log in in the cloud and do really wonderful things. We can go up there, unleash the power of big data, unleash the power of App Engine, add some code, and run analysis and statistics on our users' data, because we own that data. We, the developer, do own that data. And because we have a server now, we can add APIs. So our Chrome web application that logs our user in with the same identity can act on the cloud safe data. And now we can add the regional functionality. We want to tell the user when his favorite team during a game is scoring. So we can use GCN and send a message to the individual endpoints or use GCN and target the identity of the user so we can reach him on the screens where it matters the most. And this is the power of the Google Mobile Cloud. Thank you. If you have questions, we can take on the mic. So um, what about the uh, offline message? So if your application is not online and uh, you send it a notification, will this message get delivered when the user gets online? So in GCM, if the application, if the device where the application is is offline or the right. so you have a multiple okay. users and mm -hmm. one user um, uh, want to distribute the message, but uh, you have one device not going online. Mm -hmm. Maybe like uh, when you send out a notification, it's not online. But later on, it gets online. Will this message become an offline message? So if you have two devices, one is online and one is offline, and, we, and you target the user, so GCM sends to both, right? We send the message to the online device. As soon as the second device gets online, then we'll deliver that message there as well. So you is cache that? the message on server? Yes, unless, so there is a feature on GCM that is called time to live. We can specify an amount of time before the message expires. And if you set the time to live to zero, when we receive the message, if the device is offline, then we just drop the message. We'll never save it. Otherwise, we store it in the cloud until the device comes online. OK. Thanks. Um, the, uh, the cloud save seems like a really simple function to add. Um, Say I incorporate that into my app. Uh, much later, can I access that data in the cloud with an app running in the cloud, with functionality running in the cloud to do new things to that data? Yes. So Cloud Save has the, a cloud counterpart that has its own APIs. Not only you can access it through the app engine as you log in up there, uh, but you can, as I was saying, you can uh, expose APIs so that your own server can also access the data. A question on Cloud Save as well. Uh, it looks like it's uh, simply a simplified API for data store. Uh, so to, to what level does it, does it expose the data store functionality? And for example, can I do a transaction? Can I uh, implement the fact in my, that in my app I give a token to someone, uh, someone else? Uh, so in Android, we try to simplify the APIs as much as possible to uh, abstract the cloud, the part of the cloud. But, um, but yes. Um, the API that we will expose uh, can get ac more complicated and you can actually do all those things. I, I suggest you to follow the session tomorrow and go in details on all these things. Uh, so it sounded like Cloud Save uh, does stuff where it would sync if it was offline and then when it comes online it would sync. How do you deal with conflicts? Like if you had 
yes, save so, the same thing on two different So devices. we have um, a way to deal with conflict resolution, uh, which is a simple, a simple way. We give you back uh, the basic entity, the remote and the local entity, um, and then you'll extend that, uh, the function, and then you just deal with the conflict and give us back the results, so we just synchronize with the cloud. Is Google Cloud Save free to use, like the uh, GCM? Um, the terms on this are still to be decided. Okay. I can't speculate on that, sorry. Is the concept of users tied to Google accounts, or can it be local users as well within your application? Like outside of using, or so is it tied to Google accounts, or is it can be separate? Uh, for cloud save? Yeah, uh, no, uh, not for cloud save, but for user messaging. Yeah, so the user notification actually allows you to do both. You can use the Google identity Perfect. or your own account Perfect. system. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be at the Android booth if you guys have more questions.